is probably watching us tonight. Brother McGee, he said he wanted to. He's a guy that uh, I was in Lano, and uh, let's see. Uh, that's when I pastored Lano. That boot camp. <laughs> boot camp. Lano, Texas. Boot camp for me. I learned how to live for God over there. <laughs> Praise God. Testing, testing, testing. I will let you testy, testy, testy me out. Testing out. Did you have them fixed today? Man, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, you know what? There's a good and bad thing in here in age. Did y'all know that? You argue with your wife. You don't want to hear her say anything. You just turn them off. <laughs> my, my, my mother-in-law did her did her husband that away. He did all the fuss and fight, fuss and fuss and fuss. She just <laughs> turned it off, you know. Yeah. All right, testing. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing one. And he's doing it, isn't he? All right. Um, I wonder where Sarah Coates is. Sarah Coates, Sarah Coates, Sarah Coates. I wonder where she is. Oh, baby food. That's important. That's important. I got to say, okay. Pastor Chandler's going to back off then. You, that's always your excuse. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I love it. I love Sarah Coates. Coates. Did y'all notice what I said on Facebook? Some of y'all read that. How joyful it is to pastor this church. I want to say this. Thank you for being good to my wife. I've been good to us. I've had what I call patriotic patriots that are here, like a sister Nancy that's backed our ministry for 15 years. She's been here 15, going on 15 years. Brother Robert voted me in. Oh, he's Brother Robert's always loved me. He's always loved me. He always, every time. I've never, I can, I can go near Robert and he'll say, oh, Pastor, I love Brother Chandler, Sister Chandler. Thank you, Brother Robert, been backing me for 15, 16 years. And uh, he was there when, when I had nothing but war trying to stay here. I'm glad I stayed. I'm glad I stayed. Your wife a wonderful woman. She was another. She she was yeah, yeah, she she was a champ. She was a champ. You that didn't know Sister Carol, she was a champ. She really was. You you missed something. Let's stand and pray. Am I too loud or I'm okay? No no no. I'm I'm serious. Am I too loud or I'm okay? Is it what? Tell me, people. Too loud or okay? Okay. I just, I guess it's these monitors. I'm always used to being behind. Now, you know, I hear these here. So it's okay. All right. Brother Steve, uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. And uh, appreciate you. Appreciate Brother Steve. And every one of you, uh, love and appreciate you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus come before the throne of grace, loving you, praising you, God, because you're everything. Father, thy word is forever settled in heaven, and we know that we are transmitted and transformed by the preaching and teaching of the word of God. When the word of God is hid in our hearts, we will not sin against him. And God, I want to thank you for you loving us and caring for us. Everybody say in Jesus' name. 
right. Be seated. Does anybody lack a piece of paper, one of these? Everybody get one of these. Everybody get one of these. Wow. Had about 15 to 18 copies. Uh, I, I don't like much, and Sister uh, Tina, I will get you a copy of the other one. Huh? What was the title of it? Okay. Now, such as we have to give. Sir. Such as we have we give. That's the title of this of this lesson tonight. And uh, we, we've talked about what is the principle, such as I have, such as we have we give. And we talked about the anointing of God. It's, the anointing of God is not for you to keep. You know, when you see people say, oh man, he was anointed. He was anointed at such a time to give it away. Anointing is to give it away, not to keep. You don't possess the anointing. You don't keep the anointing. You, you receive it and you give it away. You receive it. You ever notice, let me tell you, I'm going to be transparent. I'll tell you about Pastor Chandler, okay? Many times I may, I may be exhausted in my body, and my body's trying to tell my spirit that it's exhausted too. I hope I'm communicating. And I'm tired of my body, uh, and then my mind wants to tell me that my spirit is tired. And my mind wants to convince it. Um, cause I, I've got so many irons in a fire right now. I've got so many. I'm building a house, and I have to take care of that. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I receive phone calls uh, from people. Uh, this person's sick. I have to see them or go to the hospital. I, you know, I go and pray for the people courthouse uh, I'm just shooting in every direction and um, I have to sigh through the things that I don't think is important and uh, some things in the city I don't like to go to just kind of game play and stuff you know uh, I'm, I really just cannot hardly go to um, Minister Alliance I just got a something about that. I just don't like to go because they that's where they have the rituals. We're going to have so and so to speak. He's going to speak on uh, being good to kids at the high school. We have this principal come up here and says, we want y'all to mentor our kids, but you can't say anything about Jesus. We just want you to read them books and feed them candy. And one time I said, listen. I says, folks, i of you guys, but you know, uh, I can't put a band-aid on a wound. What you want me to do is you want me to patch this thing, and it ain't going to patch. You want me to go up there and read books to your kids that are that are hellions, and their mama raises them as hellions, daddy raises them hellions, and you want me to go up there and straighten them out by reading a little book that don't have Jesus in it. I, I, ma'am, I don't have time for that. I said, what you're doing, what made it, it kind of ticked her off. She was a principal or something. She really did. I could tell that she didn't like what I had said. said, what you really want me to do is you're trying to send me up there and spend my time and put a Band-Aid when they need stitches. They need to be sewed up. They need some antiseptic put on it. They need some word in it. They need some God things in it you want me just to put a band-aid on that thing and expect me to walk away and everything's going to be all right. You know, put the magic wand on it and you're going to be okay. No, it don't work like that. They didn't like that too much. And I had to deal with that type of stuff in the city. 
Now, we don't believe in that talking in tongues. We don't believe in the power of God. We just believe that you just accept Christ as Savior and you're okay. And don't, don't go no further than that. The other day, <laughs> I love it. I, I love it when they, I have a guy that when I walk in on Thursday morning, go sit around the, call, call it the table with all these preachers. It's about eight or ten laymans and probably about 10, 12 people all, you know, counting the laymans and the pastors and stuff like that. And got this one guy that says he always tried to, he tries to kid me a little bit. And he, lo- he loves me. Guy loves me, likes me, really likes me. In fact, he's visiting our church. He's sitting right there kind of behind where, uh, where the scooter is. Yeah, back there. You know, I got him speak one night. Y'all remember that? He likes to joke with me a little bit. He says, he says well, here comes that Jesus only preacher. He's laughing. Just kind of, you know, grinning real, just grinning real big, you know. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. I says, I, I, I'm Jesus everything. Man, you should have heard everyone. Boy, they love that. You know? Uh, I am. I'm Jesus everything. I'm not just Jesus only. You know, I believe that song where it says, well, it's the fullness of the Godhead. It dwells in him. It dwells in him. And I believe that. I believe the fullness of Godhead. So, so you just you give this thing away. You give everything away. When you give everything away, you can, you know, it's, the, it's a reservoir that will not go empty. Though you may be tired in your body, and your body is going to tell you your spirit is tired and that you don't have anything, but y'all, you've got to know the difference between body tired and spirit tired. You need to know. Because I'm telling you, many times I'm tired of my body, man. My mind, well, I'll be in there praying, oh, I don't want to fall asleep. And I say, you know, you know God, I just, you know, just go home and just go to bed. My spirit says, it's Holy Ghost. sleep, it don't lie, it don't cheat, it don't scheme, it's always on top of it, it's always right, you can trust the Holy Ghost anywhere at any time, let me tell y'all, y'all really want to know about this Holy Ghost, what it'll do for you, you get this thing inside of you, and it don't lie to you, and sometimes you say, I just wonder if it's God or not, if it don't leave you, it's probably God. If it deals with you and it don't leave you alone too easy. And, 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 and say, for instance, I, 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 my last church, I, ain't, I know I'm on live stream, so I'm not going to get you any names. But my wife would always tell me the ones that watch for. tell me she say honey she says I ain't gonna mention any names she says he's just not as a good friend to you as you think he's maybe as you think that he is he's not as loyal oh baby don't tell me that I wind up a year later he's walking he's walking out the door and he's walking and walking and walking keeps walking goes somewhere else do whatever and I feel like, wow, oh, I felt betrayed. Honey, I told you. I want to hear that. Let me tell you all something. If you don't want to hear some things, God won't tell you. You all hear me? If you want to hide, just say, no, I'm not going to believe you. I'm going to put that back here. God says, okay, just sit on the shelf. I'll let that thing set there. And that thing's going to lie to you. 
It's going to steal from you. It's going to scheme. It's going to, but this Holy Ghost inside says, don't push things under the carpet too fast. Think it over because some things are God-minded and God-ideal. It's got an ideal. That's how you know the mind of the Spirit, the mind of God. You don't, you don't take this thing. You've got to take it serious because this, this Holy Ghost does not lie. It does not lie at all. It's, it's a protection. It's a protector. Move my face up. It's a protector to you. It talks. It speaks. Better know it does. I may be off of this thing a little bit. I'm fixing it back on. Talk about laying on of hands, the blessings that are imparted. Imparted to you through the laying on of hands talked last week about laying on hands and speaking while you're laying hands on. Don't be silent about it. Speak it. Lay hands on your kids. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I wonder how many things would not have happened if we would have known some things that we know now these children that you have, uh, John and Amy, let me just use them for examples. Do, do not relinquish of laying hands on their little minds. And when they're going to school and you say, God, you cover my children this day. You send the angels of God and you're laying hands on them at the same time. God, you send the angels of the Lord to encamp around about my children that no evil come upon them. That when evil is around them, they see the angels of God that are encamped around about them. And you could say, y'all listen to me? And you say, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ because I have all rights to plead the blood. Because that's our protection. It's our covering. And we also talked about laying hands on in, in, in the impartation of spiritual gifts by, by men of God that are in the congregation that have to teach and their deacons and their, their uh, men that have callings of God upon them. Never discount their laying on of hands upon you. We call it presbyter. Uh, imparting gifts, spiritual gifts. And uh, also we talked about laying on of hands in authority. Uh, authority uh, is impartation. A charge to a challenge. An unction is a spiritual part of the inner man. Spiritual resources are important, are imparted uh, that stimulate or motivate actions and it, it, it repels stagnation in someone's life. And there's things that can happen in your walk with God. These things are vitally important. Through the laying on of hands, people are set apart for specific, specific ministries and uh, functioning ministries, functioning in the body. Uh, we talked about that and also the impartation of that's illustrated in the Old Testament about impartation, spiritual gifts. Now that we can enjoy in the New Covenant Church, the Old Testament contains unique uses of laying on of hands and the principles of, of uh, uh, sacrifices, acting or done for another. We find that the guilt was actually transferred through the laying on of hands when we're not right. I don't want anybody praying for me that's not right. I, I have to be real careful. That my spirit is right with God, and I'm in tune with God, and I know, you no, know, 
know, I always, you know, uh, I always sing that song myself. I said, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O oh Lord. Take not the Holy Spirit from me and restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. It means everything to me to have a renewed spirit. And a renewed spirit is renewed through a renewed mind can't think wrong and say God created me a clean heart you have to be in alignment with the word of God you got to know some words sometimes it's good to quote some word of God I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me when I feel like hell's come against me then I quote the word of God I can do I can do I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me I have the anointing and the power of God in my life because I've talked in tongues. I received the baptism of fire. I've got everything that I need in order to make it. I don't have to be slim of anything because God is my healer. Why is the laying on of hands many times accompanied with prophecy? Prophecy. Um, talked about that. Prophecy gives us a spiritual weapon for fighting the good fight of faith. Doubts commonly assails and attacks violently and blows against us. We have to have something of some kind of armor to fight these things. When you live in an ungodly world that hell is, I'm going to tell you something. Well, I don't know if I talk about political things or not, but I'm going to anyhow. When you get the president that believes in abortions and all of this stuff, and and he's Muslim, he's not Christian. Let me tell y'all a little secret that y'all may not know. Do you know that he has set up everything in the White House and all of his cabinets, all the cabinets, are Muslims? He is setting this thing up for the Muslim world to take America over. And you think that he is for us, he is not for the Christian world. He's not for it. And the thing about it, it tells you the thinking, how people think that can vote him in twice. And a few years beforehand, it was a Muslim that took down the Twin Towers. Oh my God, where is America? Do they have their head buried in the sand somewhere? And I'm not so much for the other party either. I think they all act like a bunch of kids up there in the White House or running for offices. It's sad. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, Acts 17. Who is qualified? Prophesy in the realm of direction. Look on number four down there. Kind of, we're kind of fishing up this thing. Personal direction is not usually the realm of the New Testament gifts of prophecies. God only entrusts this to the overseers of the flock. The overseers are are serving in union with Christ who is the head of the church and they are extensions of his ministry to the body. He is the one to call and equip. He's also the one to promote and to send forth. In the New Testament, we find overseers. 
gathering unto groups for the purpose of laying on hands and prophesying in order to establish people in their ministries. No one pastor or elders attempt to take upon themselves without others to assist. This is for two important reasons. All prophecies must be judged. Since, since we each prophesy in part throughout these of ministries ensure us of a fuller picture. We, we call the group, call the group assembly of elders, people that are apt to teach and people that are apt to, to uh, be uh, leaders in the church. They, they, they've done their homework. They've got callings in their lives. Um, so these assembly of elders, whether they're from, from a local church or several, of con, maybe a convention or something. Uh, I remember when I was ordained. I wasn't ordained in this church. I was ordained in a convention and it was the elders that laid hands on me those that are over me that put me in position to be uh, the part of uh, our ordination I was first uh, had my local license and, I, and after that they, I started pastor church right after I got my local license in uh, Livingston, Louisiana pastor in a small town over there. In fact, my old church got flooded. A lot of water in it over there. There's one of them that's got flooded over there. But anyway, I, I was local, and then I received my general license there. Went before the general board of Louisiana District to get my general license. And when I came over here, um, I pastored here probably couple, two or three years before I got my ordinations here. Uh, it's just a stair step in ministry. Um, so, <clears throat> this is because the Greek word of elders, elders is presbyter. In, in, order, in, in other words, the Bible does not, not give license to every believer. It's, it's, it's not that. It's just, it's a tool of organization. It's a tool to organize. It's nothing that we call that you have to do this and you have to do that. It's just some things, it's better when you have a larger, larger, larger church, larger, larger group, then you, it's better to organize it in different manners. And this is, uh, and I, I like the way they, they prayed over me when they prayed. They prayed and they begin to speak over my life. I have been ever I, I've been prayed over so many times. And when I hear pastors praying over me, ministries praying over me, I, I used to hear them. I, I put on Facebook, I think it was yesterday, how it was prophesied in 1982. And uh, <clears throat> let me let me just tell you a little bit about some things. It was prophesied to me by two people, my pastor and a little lady in our church, 70 something, in her mid 70s. She's passed on now, but she said the pretty well exact same thing my pastor said. She said, I see you going through a field, joyfully picking fruit, and she explained it this way. She said, When I say picking fruit, I'm talking about fruit that all you had to do was touch it and it would fall off the tree. It was so ripe. And it was so ready. And, and, uh, and for years, for, for several years, I would bring that up. And of course, my pastor pretty well told me the same thing. <clears throat> but I would... I, I would pray and I said God I, I don't see these things I don't see these things in my life first of all I made myself available in prayer I, I prepared myself to be able to receive these things I, I was preparing myself and I, I prayed I fasted I sought the Lord and God what he does he goes through the 
nation. He says, ah, you prepared yourself. Ah, you prepared yourself. Now I can speak to you because you prepared yourself to hear me speak. God don't just, God don't just prophesy to everything out here. You know, he don't do that. Because not everybody receives it. They, and, and not everybody will respect what God says to them. Listen to me. And, and not everybody will take it at heart. I, I, I took it at heart that I, in 1982, count how many years that's been. It's good math. 82. Huh? Now, 34? 34 years? Is that right? 34 years. 34 years. And what we don't understand is some things God don't just do it all at one time, but he does it a little at a time, and here's a fruit that's about to fall off the tree, and now I'm grabbing it, and I'm possessing that fruit. It's because God says, my prayer is that not only you have fruit, but that your fruit will remain. Now, I, I, I may not be the best preacher. I, I may not be... I, I, I may fail in a lot of areas, but I, I don't lose much fruit. That's not a weak area of my walk with God. My pastor was strong about whatever was sent to him. He kept it. God, I mean, he was gifted and he kept it. I have the same gift. I, I don't look now. Now, I can't, I can't, I can't keep goats. Goats, man, if you turn yourself, if I turn on them, you know, and he's back there behind, he's going to butt me in the rear end. That's goats. It's hard to pastor goats. And I, I'm not talking about goats now. I'm talking about sheep that are willing to submit to the things of God. You know, I, I just stay with the Word of God. That's, that's all I do is just stay with the Word of God. And, and you know what? I'm beginning to see what God's talking about in 1982. I, for years I went, God, where's, where, man? Man, God spent 10, 15 years prophesied way back then. Out of two or three witnesses and everything be established, but God, I'm not seeing nothing. You know, and, and, and come on, open your eyes. If God begins to give you fruit, it may not be the truckload that you're looking for, but it may be, it may come on an apple cart. But you still look at it as a part of the prophecy. Let me tell y'all something. If I, you know, it's not something that's going to be dumped in my lap all at one time and, whoo, boy, I see all the fruit, you know. It's going through the vineyard in the journey picking fruit as I live for God. And what I'm picking, I'm possessing, and they're not leaving. I, I mean, yes, goats, they, they, they'll go. Man. And you're going to have goats. You're going to have goat spirit, man. And I don't like to eat goat meat. It's tough. I say that laughing. But no. no. But what God wants to do is he wants to... Well, the sheep... Sheep will go under the... the uh, that tree that talks about the Bible. I know which tree I'm talking about that the sheep go under. Olive tree. I'm talking, I'm fixing to talk to you about some things here. The sheep would go under the the, the uh, olive tree. That's, that's what it is. It's they're they're not very big trees. More like bushes. 
but they would get up underneath it and the and the oil that would actually leak off of the leaves would drip on the sheep and it would kill the ticks all of the uh, parasites God has specifics of taking care of his sheep in the pasture. He places those trees, places things in your life. I'm using trees, but he, he, he places different people in your life, Holy Ghost does, that will minister to you, help you on your journey. I, I've never seen this church of where it's at right now. Now, I've had people tell me that. Chandler, I've seen it. I've seen the unity and how these things come together. I have to realize that what I am, I'm going to produce. Well, that's scary. You're not going to produce anything that you think you are. You may think you're something else. But when you're when God squeezes you, something else comes out. It doesn't match what you say. My words have to match who I am. I claim to be this prophet, and I claim to be this man of God, and I claim to be this. You know, I was having I was having a talk the other day with my with one of my mentors and we talk and I talk to him and I say good things to him and he likes it and he says good things to me and I say good things to him and God things you know and boy he likes it and wow I'm going to grab this and I'm going to grab that you know we, we minister to one another and uh, we was talking about my pastor his dad my pastor and I'm real real close to his son and uh, my pastor's not doing real good right now he's getting more feeble in his age. He's 81 now. And he's just not doing good. Let's pray for him, Pastor Neil. And I talked to his son, Wayne. And, and uh, we're so on the same page. We, we looked at, we looked at, we looked at the, at the church of, the Life Center church I came out of and we talked uh, the good, bad, and ugly over it. Why, why would this thing happen? He said, and he'd tell me, he said, you know, he said, I, I, he says, I had so-and-so to come to me the other day. I said, you did? He said, yeah, he came to me. He said, and I told him, he says, that, that person that came to the church such and such date, they were false prophets. I said, Brother Wayne, man, I thought the same thing. I just didn't feel right about it. He began to talk, and I said, "My Lord, Brother Wayne, some of the things that's coming out of your mouth, I think the same thing. That has when the mouth of two or three witnesses, when he says it, and I say it, and he says it, and I say it. He's saying what I'm thinking, and I'm saying what he's thinking. There's something that can transpire in that. That tells me that something is on the same page." Now, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to bring this church into saying that when you speak to somebody and they speak back to you and they're speaking what you're thinking and you're speaking to them what you're thinking and your thinking is lined up with their thinking and their thinking is lined up with your thinking. Does that make sense to y'all? And it's called unity. It's not called gossip. It's not that I want to drag somebody's name through the mud. That's not the motive behind this. But I'm going to tell you something. We better be, as a people of God, we better be sensitive to enough to know what is going on around us. And uh, I, won't, I won't go any further on that, but a lot of truth in that. Lots of truth in that. Nothing is automatic in the kingdom. 
Not a thing. Your maturity is going to be processed whether you like it or not. And you cannot, you've heard me say this, you cannot be processed staying home, eating popcorn, and drinking Coke. And oh, we don't like to hear the phrase, you know, um, they, some that miss church, they, they forsake themselves assembly, such as some do. Listen, that is sin against God to miss church. It's sin. What are you going to do about that? We don't like to hear that. Because we like to come to church when we want to come to church and we love our popcorn and eat our, drink our Cokes and eat our popcorn at home. And we'll listen to a preacher at home if we have to. There's just some things that we just don't need to do. Does laying on of hands with prophecy automatically create a ministry? Nothing's automatic. We must learn how to cooperate with the Holy Ghost as he works in us and in our circumstances to accomplish his purpose. Laying on of hands with prophecy may confirm God's calling upon an individual. That is, it may make him sure of the direction that he's already received from God. It's some things that God is allowing someone to pray over you. It confirms some things in your spirit. You are so in tune with the things of God because you've got a prayer life. You're praying. You're seeking God. If you don't want to pray and don't seek God, then guess what? Go drive a truck. What? <laughs> The superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church one time said that. He says, you preachers out there, you want to come and get behind your pulpits and you want to preach to the congregation and you just don't want to pray and don't want to seek God. All you want to do is receive their tithing. He says, why don't you just quit your job and go drive a truck? You know, this thing is so real and so tangible that it only works through commitment. We have our generics. That are listened to. There's generics out there that look so close, but they're so far. That's why I have struggles sometimes going to uh, uh, some of the things that go on in this city. I just I can't I can't tie myself into it. Because it's so generic, it's like uh, okay, it's time. It's time for Pastor to come up, and he's going to read the scripture. I get up there, and I, well, you know, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And, I, 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 and then I go sit down. And guess what, Pastor so and so, he's going to come up and read an Old Testament scripture. And he, I, 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 he goes and sits down. Such a ritual. No moves of the Holy Ghost. No moves of God. And if it did move, oh my God, it would scare them to death. Scare them to death. I, I love it. Man, we have moves of God on Wednesday night or Sunday go and I'm at the round table. Y'all know what the round table is. I go to the round table and say, well, how, how did it go? Later? Man, my God, we had to move up the spirit. Holy Ghost move. They just... No, I, I tell you what I really like is when they look at me and they look at him and they look at each other like, has he fallen out of a tree yet? You can't relate to the moving of the Spirit. It's tough. You can't relate. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And this Holy Ghost, been, it's been falling for centuries. 
you know, I, I was on a, a little getaway not too long ago, and I was, I was, I, I, I met this lady at this hotel, and I sat there and I talked with her. I said, "Ma'am, I, I tell you how I do it. I, I, this is this way I do it." I says, "Do you go to church?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I go to church. I says, "Okay," and I let her talk. And then I, then I talk. I said, "Well, are you happy? You happy where you at?" when they say oh yeah man we do this I thought oh boy if you're happy what you in you don't want to hear what I'm in it, it, when they tell me it's some kind of ultra liberal church and they do this ritual stuff and they're happy and so all of a sudden she said well I, I belong to the Baptist fellowship and I, I uh it's a fundamental. It's not the it's not the Baptist Church. Uh, we call it uh, organization Southern Baptist. We we're not we're not Southern Baptist. We are fundamental. I said, well, what's the difference? So I'm just asking. Well, this this this. We we have about twenty five people. Oh, okay. I said, oh, can I can I can I ask you some questions? And I, I begin to talk to them, and I begin to say, "Okay, I got. Can I? Can I? Can I pop some questions to you?" And then, and then, then they'd say, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be fine. Okay. I meet one person in the Bible. Just one. Put a face on it. A name on it. Anybody in the Bible that was baptized in titles. I just have to write that down. I said, "Good study it. Love that man. Cause ain't no." That's what I did at these round tables up there. And they looked at me. They looked at each other. I said, come on, tell me. Well, uh, that's about what they did. Uh, uh, cleared their throat. See, we, 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 we believe so many rituals, and we've believed it all of our life that we think it's doctrine because everybody's doing it. Not everybody's doing what we're doing, but you know what? Find me in the book of Acts. Find me where there's action. Find me where, where there was a sign that says, I'll give money for this experience. Find me where these are not drunking as you suppose being the third hour of the day. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and sons and daughters shall prophesy. Whew, man. This crazy thing, I can't tell. What, what time is it? 821. This has got this black face on it, and man... When, shine, when everything hits it, that shiny stuff, I can't tell which, which is where. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, that, that might be an excuse. I have to shut everything down. Then if I don't see it, will I keep going? No, not really. You know, that in the last day, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all. Of the, these are not drunken. You know, oh, my God, where is the, where is the church at today? And it does say that in the last days, it's going to be greater than the former days and I don't see no greater moves of God as they did in the former days in these modern day churches now I'm not here to put anything down it's not my motive tonight my motive is, is to press you into deeper dimensions of God that you have never probably experienced it yourself question what do you have that Apollo didn't have? What do you have that Cornelius didn't have? Study Cornelius. Study Apollo. What did you have that they don't have? The Bible speaks of Cornelius and Apollo as being great men that love God. In fact, Cornelius was a man that says I'm going to put up a memorial about you guy that you were so good and so powerful but you need the Holy Ghost 
told Cornelius, Peter did. You need this Holy Ghost. Follows, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Well, I hadn't heard where there was you know, this Holy Ghost. What are you talking about, this Holy Ghost? And again, the modern day church don't say that. The modern day church says, receive Christ as your personal Savior and you're okay. Then you get this extra, you get this extra gift called the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know what the extra gift is when you get this over here. They call it the baptism of fire. Well, what is this over here that you get that's just an extra, it's like a spare tire? Where is, where is the dimension? I, well, I received Christ now as my Savior. I'm saved. Saved from what? I'm not being a smart aleck. But the only salvation that I have is I am saved from my sins. I am not saved by putting myself into the kingdom. I'm saved from my sins, but there from that point that I'm saved from my sins, I'm, I was baptized in Jesus' name for the washing away of my sins calling upon the name of the Lord and then I walk therein every day in cleansing by the blood of the Lamb claiming my promises every day walking in my journey holy, acceptable unto God which is a reasonable service in righteousness right standings with God I don't cheat, I don't smoke I don't drink and I don't cuss why? Because saints don't supposed to. Laying over hands prophecy may confirm that God's calling upon an individual that is that it may have a sure direction has already received from God. In this way, it is released to him to function in confidence, laying on hands with prophecy stimulates or motivates faith by opening up avenues of revelation. It may stir the resident, the residue or the this Holy Ghost gift inside to activate and operate, but it it will never substitute for personal growth of discipline, submission, faith, and service. You cannot have this without discipline, submission faith and serving I am born to serve I am oh, the, the world system says submission means you'll be a slave that's what they say the world system says be your own person be your own man be big enough to stand up and run your own world but God says it's different. See, kingdom things are totally different than this worldly system. We must totally invest ourselves in God's purpose. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that, that thy profiting may appear to all. We must study till I come, give attendance to the reading, exhortation to doctrines, 1 Timothy 4.13. We must dis discipline ourselves, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrines, continue therein and those. For in doing this, thou shalt be saved and thy house shall be saved as well. 1 Timothy 4.16. We must allow God to rekindle our gift periodically. This thing has got to be germinated periodically. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of hands, by the putting on of my hands. For God hath given me, us the spirit, have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy, first chapter six through seven. So whether it not be God, whether it be God or not, God has spoken to us through prophecies we must be diligently
in these four matters of commitment, study, discipline, yielding us in order to be ready for the future ministry. Everybody has got ministry. Many are called, but few chosen. Many are called. Listen to me. That's true. Many are called, but few are chosen. Why would God say that? Does anybody know? Many are called, but few are chosen. Why? Why would God say that? Huh? Many are called. Now understand now, a call, everybody's called. Everybody's got a call of some kind. Whether it be uh, exhortation, whether it be a Sunday school teacher, whether it be uh, uh, maybe gifts that God has given you. There's gifted people that can win souls. Man, they can go out and they can gather and man, they, they've got the what we call the gift of gab, but that's not the gift of gab. That's the gift of the Spirit working. I will, I will correct anybody that thinks it's just the gift of gab or it's just personality. No. But God takes your personality and God can use you. For instance, I have a daughter that's in jail tonight. That girl has filled up my church with people. Literally. If she would sell out to God, she would come to this city and she could fill my church up. She's got the gift. She can go out and she meets anybody at any time. And everybody is... Man, you either cannot stand her or you'll love her to pieces. just depends on where she's at on her drugs. You know, I mean, she's a druggie. At 14 years old, she could sing in the choir and the house would fall down. Just, whew, power of God fall. I've seen it. Not a kid I have can sing like her. But you know what happened? Y'all, y'all really want to hear what happened? God took the anointing off of her and placed it on the younger one in my family. Now, she can't sing. She's messed up her voice with cigarette smoke and everything else with it. And now Mindy can sing almost professionally. So anointed of God. Why do these things happen? Respect what you have from God. Allow him to talk to you. Allow him to speak to you. Allow him to do great, wonderful things in you. And don't discount your call. And do not call. Don't don't be self grandma call. You let the Holy Ghost call you in a certain areas and walks with God. This thing's real. It only comes through uh, it only comes through ministering of yielding. God is not magic, and He's not limited to methods. It's not a sign of spiritual maturity to sit around and wait for the laying on of hands before beginning to make positive contributions to the kingdom of God. One important principle in in guidance is this. I'm being in the way already functioning to the best of my abilities that God will lead me into deeper dimensions. Often we discover that our calling as we find out for what we are best suited for. You know what I pray? Let me tell you what I pray. You can pray the same prayer. I don't claim myself to be the smartest preacher. I'm not a theologian. I haven't gone to many years of Bible college and all that stuff. And I take nothing. I don't discredit that. If I was to have my years over again, I'll tell you what I would do. I would get a a psychology degree, counselor's degree. That's what I'd be because, man, I need it. Pastor this day have so many issues that are flying in so many directions. So you know what I'm doing? I'm educating myself in psychology. I read their books. And I, I, and I study people. 
so I do the best I can. Now, this is what I do with God. Y'all ready for this? I could sit back and germinate my mind, go crazy, and I could say, God, I don't have a psychological degree, and I don't, I don't have a counseling degree, and God, I'm not able to do this, I'm not able to do that, God. I see these preachers doing these big churches, God, and you know what, they've got so much more than me. Hogwash. Shut myself up. I don't supposed to be them. They couldn't pastor my church if they wanted to because they're not called to this church. You know what you have to say? Now, these, this is my prayer. Y'all ready for this? This is my prayer. God, and I meet some of these guys that are so super smart, man. They say these long words, and I go, huh? Would you repeat that? Is that English? So this is what I do. I said, God, when I pray, God, I'm I'm not as smart as some folks. It's not. I wish it was, but it's not just me. I tell you what, God, I'm doing the best I know to do. I'm really doing the best I know to do. God, I'll tell you what. I'm praying that you'll do me a favor. And I says, the, 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 the abilities that I don't have, would you move into myself, inside of me, and you do the abilities that I don't have? You do some work that I know it's unctioned by the Spirit God that I cannot do. I don't have the abilities to do it. And God, would you do that for me? And many times, listen to me. I'm closing. Many times that this thought would come in my mind. I thought, God, where'd this come from? I speak that thing and guess what it was like that I, it did not come from me I didn't have I didn't have this ability it wasn't me it had to be God so don't ever discount yourself and say you can't do it but you can I can do all things Christ that strengthens me Father tonight as I pray I pray over this people every person that's here I pray the hand of God rest upon them I pray God that you'd reach down inside of them and germinate something and make something alive Oh, God, there's something in this congregation, gifts, oh, God, that's going to be distributed. Power of God is going to be used through these people. The act of faith is going to come alive in these people right here. Father, those that were so insecure, God, I rebuke that spirit of insecurity. And I take dominion over that spirit of insecurity. And God, I pray right now that the moving of the Holy Ghost, God, take its place and do mighty works. Lord, let it start operating on Wednesday nights. Let it start operating on Sundays. Let it start operating in our homes. Let the abilities that we don't have, let the unction of God's spirit Come alive and do the works of the Holy Ghost. God, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Love and appreciate every one of you.
Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Many are called, few are chosen because they don't want to pay the price. There's a price to pay. No, sir. Everybody's got a copy. And if you need another copy, I can make one next week. Who didn't get a copy? Everybody got a copy? You didn't get a copy? Okay. I will make you a copy. Who, who needs another copy? Sir, did you get a copy back here? You get a copy? Great. You going to need another one? Got it? Okay. Good deal. I'm glad to have you in my life. Good to have you. Shake his hand, would y'all? Be friendly. Praise God. All right. Love everyone. Appreciate everyone here. Oh, dear. <laughs>